What's up guys? This is Sheila from Cacao Culture. Welcome back to our channel, the best place for cacao farming, chocolate makers, and entrepreneurs. In today's video, we'll be talking about the next step in the bean to bar chocolate making process, which is tempering chocolates. We'll discuss what tempering is about. This is a very technical topic, but I'll try to simplify it for you guys. Towards the end, I'll give you some tips on how to do it manually. We get some comments on our Facebook and YouTube pages where they ask about why their chocolate is turning white or why does it have white spots. So in this video, we'll be telling you why it's happening to your chocolate. So if you want to learn about tempering, please keep on watching. In our previous episodes, we talked about roasting and grinding of cacao beans. This video for today is part of that series of uh, bean to bar chocolate making. So if you haven't watched our previous episodes, please make sure to check those out because we have discussed those processes in detail. So let's dive into today's topic. So after grinding, we just need to solidify our chocolate and we have to go through the very technical step called tempering. So what is tempering? In a very simple explanation, tempering means raising, lowering, and raising again the temperature of chocolate so that we get the right consistency. Chocolate contains cocoa butter and this is what gives the chocolate the smoothness or yung uh, melt in your mouth na feeling when we bite into the chocolate. And cocoa butter is made of six types of fat crystals. So through tempering, the different crystals are encouraged to form the most desirable type of crystal that will make the chocolate stable and give it that good appearance. So the crystals are aligned uniformly so that we get the right consistency. So to simplify further, you might think of the fat crystals as bricks that you have to stack together uniformly to get that stable form. If you don't go through tempering, you won't be able to get to that stable form. So in the process of tempering chocolate, we guide the chocolate to form the form 5 crystals. We do this through precise temperature manipulation and agitation. So out of the six crystals, yung form five crystals, yung gusto natin na matira sa chocolate natin. And later on, we'll discuss how we'll be able to do that. However, at this point, you have to take note that different types of chocolate have different melting and burning points. So your dark chocolate will be different from your milk and white chocolate. Specifically, milk and white chocolate will have higher content of milk fat that might get burned if you melt it into a higher temperature. So there are different temperatures ranges when we're tempering dark milk and white chocolate and we'll discuss that later in the video. So first we'll answer why we need to temper chocolate. What is the difference between untempered and tempered chocolate? So untempered chocolate easily blooms and is prone to white streaks, spots, and marks. It also has a dull surface. It has dry and crumbly mouthfeel. So when you try to break it apart, it's easily breakable without any snap and it may crumble in your hands. Untempered chocolate is also very difficult to remove from a chocolate mold because it gets stuck or breaks and then it melts too easily and quickly in room temperature. On the other hand, properly tempered chocolate has these characteristics. So tempered chocolate has a shiny and glossy surface. It has a smooth and creamy mouthfeel. So when you try to snap a tempered chocolate, you hear a satisfying snap when you break it. And it should easily pop out of your chocolate mold when you turn it upside down. Because the fatty acid crystals in the tempered chocolate are locked together tightly, it takes a higher temperature to pull them apart and it stays solid in warmer temperatures. So what happens during the tempering process? Let's have a walkthrough. So first, we need to get rid of all the existing crystal types. So we do this by heating the chocolate and melting it completely. So from the grinding process, since the chocolate is still in liquid form and may init pa siya from the grinder, then we don't need to melt it at all. But then if you stored it without tempering it, then you need to remelt the whole chocolate up to a certain temperature. 
So as I've said, there will be different temperature ranges for different types of chocolate. So for dark chocolate, you have to melt it all the way from 46 to maybe up to 50 degrees Celsius. For milk chocolate, up to 45 degrees. And for white chocolate, it is up to 40 degrees Celsius. So after melting all the chocolate, then you have to lower the temperature. So this temperature drop will initiate the rapid formation of form 5 and form 4 crystals. So essentially, nawawala yung form 1 to 3. If you're thinking about anong nangyari sa form 6 crystals, it actually takes a longer time to form. So it will not show during this time. It might take weeks or months to form on our chocolate. So again, for dark, milk, and white chocolate, there will be different temperature ranges. And these are the temperature that you need to reach. If the temperature drops lower than the recommended temperatures that we've shown earlier, then there will be a possibility that you will be forming uh, form 1, 2, and 3 crystals. And this will affect the formation of stable form 5 crystals. When this happens, what you need to do is to remelt everything and start again. So now we have rapidly formed form 5 and form 4 crystals. But what we need for the chocolate to be in correct temper is only the form 5. So the next step is to raise the temperature again so that we will erase the form 4 crystals and what will remain is a stable form 5. So these are the temperatures that you need to reach to know that your chocolate is now in temper. Please note that you have to maintain that temperature for your chocolate because if not, the chocolate will go out of temper. But don't worry, when this happens, you just need to remelt it and start all over again. So how do you do tempering and what equipment can you use? So there are three main methods. So first, in the tabling method, what you need is cold surface. So usually, chocolate makers use a marble or granite table or even a stainless steel table will do. So to do that, you just need spatulas and infrared thermometer or a digital thermometer to get the temperature of the chocolate so when you melt the chocolate up to the initial temperature which if it's dark chocolate then it's about 46 to 50 degrees Celsius you take two-thirds of that pour it over the cold surface and then spread it using your spatula so what we're doing here is that we're using the cold surface to lower down the temperature of the chocolate so when you reach the desired temperature for example for dark chocolate that will will be 28 to 29 degrees Celsius, then you need to scoop the cold chocolate and put it back to the bowl. Remember, you have one-third of the chocolate remaining in the bowl and that will be helpful in raising the temperature of the chocolate to the desired range, which is for dark chocolate, 30 to 31. And you do this by mixing it together, the cold and then the one-third chocolate that was left in your bowl. So if the temperature is hotter than 32 degrees, degrees after you've mixed the two mixtures together then you have to repeat it again so you pour two-thirds of the mixture again on the cold uh, surface and then lower it down to the desired temperature and then put it back in the bowl until you reach that range of 30 to 31 degrees celsius for dark chocolate second method the seeding method so in the seeding method, you have your tempered chocolate as the seed and then you have your working chocolate which is the one that you melted. So what you need to do is to add the tempered chocolate slowly until you reach the desired range for tempered chocolate. So for dark chocolate, that will be 30 to 31 degrees Celsius. The easiest method will be having a tempering machine so such as this one tempering machines comes in various sizes it can be just as small as this one or as big as like the big industrial chocolate makers machines so the concept of a tempering machine is that there's a bowl and then it's heated up to the desired temperature and then it goes through a cycle of lowering the temperature and then raising the temperature again to the desired range for your chocolate. There are continuous tempering machines such as the ones produced by Selmi or FBM and these tempering machines continuously revolves the chocolate 
in the bowl and then it's, it passes through like a cooling stage and then before it gets deposited it's heated slightly so that it gets tempered so in our experience when we were starting we actually use the tabling method so it's the manual process of tempering so what you're seeing here is a tempering machine that we bought from chocovision.com it's a small tempering machine that we use for our test batches or our experiments so here are some tips if you're manually tempering your chocolate number one how to tell if your chocolate is tempered so what you can do is take a baking sheet dip it in your chocolate and see if it will set within five minutes if it sets within that time and there's no white streaks then you have properly tempered your chocolate number two your working environment you have to make sure that when you're working with chocolate you are in a working temperature environment which is about 20 to 21 degrees celsius any higher than that then you might have a problem with tempering your chocolate as for the humidity the humidity level for your room should be below 50 percent it is a challenge here in our weather in the philippines to achieve this so what you can do is make sure that you have the right air conditioner installed in your production room and also you might need to have a dehumidifier to control the temperature and humidity of your room number three overheating your chocolate unfortunately there is no way to salvage burnt or overheated chocolate because it will affect the texture and the flavor of your final product so make sure that you have the thermometer at hand. So it may be your infrared thermometer or your digital thermometer. But you cannot work with tempering chocolates without a thermometer. So make sure that you have a good thermometer handy because you will use that in the whole process of tempering chocolate. Number four, make sure there's no water. So when working with chocolate, water is the number one enemy. Your chocolate will seize up even with just a drop of water. So make sure that your surfaces, your tempering machine, all the equipment that you will use is free of water. Seized chocolate or uh, chocolate with water is already ruined and there's no turning back. You cannot just retemper it. So what you can do is just add more water so that you can turn it into something like a chocolate sauce. In our next episode, we'll be talking about the next step in the Binto Bar chocolate making process, which is molding. So make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell to get notified when we upload a new video. In the meantime, while you wait for our new video, please watch our previous episodes. We love to talk about cacao farming, chocolate making, and entrepreneurship. So thank you for watching our video and see you on the next one. Bye!